So we understand sort of money coming in, money coming out. The thing you don't know from looking at it this way is whether or not when this, when this money falls out, right, did that money fall out from these guys or from like these guys, right? Was it like, is it like these customers who came from a long time ago um, and then you lost them late in their life or is it from like users who just appeared now and you lost them right away? Big difference, right? Um, so here's one way of thinking about it. So, so a, a visualization we typically use, we, we really need to understand it sort of at the cohort level. So on the left, what this is here, the way to read this is the x-axis is the month, or I think this is actually a week of joining. So, so let's say here, this is July something, 2014. This many users joined, okay? Now, when you go up, the y coordinate is how many weeks in age those users are, okay? So like, so these guys from July have been around for this many weeks. The guys who started further back, they've been around more weeks, so this goes up, right? The guys who just joined, they, didn't, they haven't been around that long, so you don't go up this far, okay? Now the color is the retention percentage, so like how many of that cohort stuck around, right? So what this is saying here is that, okay, so, so if you take a fixed, fixed slice here, this is, uh, this is eight weeks. Okay, so at eight weeks, what's the retention at eight weeks? Well, back in the past, it used to be red, which is pretty good. And here, it's not as good recently. Yellow, worse, right? So your ability to retain the four week or eight week user is worse now, right? So the idea of laying it out like this is now you've, you've broken down all your users in terms of like where they are in their life cycle, right? As time passes, it adds diagonal lines, right? Right, calendar time. Um, this thing here is Christmas. You see Christmas, right? Everybody kind of falls out. Nobody opens their phones. Um, this is Thanksgiving, right before it. Um, other interesting things, you can tell that something different happened here, right? Because these cohorts are different than these cohorts. And you can see down here, the reason why is because the number of new users spiked. So you sort of increased the denominator. You, you threw all these new users into the system, and invariably, since you added all these new users, they didn't retain as good as ones you got naturally, right? Their retention is worse, so these cohorts are performing worse. This is very typical, right? So, so in this case, what's going on, right, is that the, the company is, is trying out some paid acquisition. They go out and like buy users. They buy a bunch of Facebook ads. They're like, okay, we're gonna spend five Gs or something, 10 Gs a week. And they buy a bunch of users, they get a bunch of users, but they don't retain as well. So the aggregate value of, of what they've gotten is actually not necessarily better than if they hadn't spent that money, right? And this kind of gives you a way to frame that. Um, this is a similar visualization. This is actually in Mixpanel. Do you guys use Mixpanel? People still use that? Nobody uses Mixpanel? Okay, so Mixpanel is an analytics company that provides this as a service. So if you like have your app or your business and you just plug into them, they'll provide you this visualization, which is basically the same thing. Um, so, so when a company comes, once again, you know, when you guys are coming to pitch, when you guys are coming to look and, and kind of coming around and trying to get people to look at your companies, this is the kind of stuff we're gonna look at, right? With a combination of this and the ones I showed you before, that basically completely disaggregates your growth and, and breaks it up in terms of like how much of it is coming in versus going out, and how much of it is sticking around at the cohort level, right? And this way we can sort of understand all the components of it. So showing, it's one of these things where you can fake the first graph kind of, you know, you can just buy a lot of users and make the first graph go up. You can't fake these ones, right? You can't, it's really hard to trick these guys to stick around after 40 weeks, right? You're not, you're not playing, you're not, there's not a way to mask that, okay? Um, you can actually use this for like things other than retention. So that graph I showed you is retention before. Um, in this case, this is actually a SaaS business. Um, on the x-axis is the month of, of acquiring the SaaS customer, right? And on the y-axis is the cumulative dollars they've spent per customer in the cohort, right? So here, right, this says uh, February 2014, there were, what is this? Some number, 165 customers that you acquired and then they you know, they spent mon money with you each month, so your cumulative dollars per customer went up, right, each month, um, which is good. So they all, so this is cumulative, it's, it's a little different. You can tell this one is very different, right? This cohort has some crazy whale in it. This cohort had only 80 customers, but one of those customers was, must have been spending so much money that like, it drove the cumulative value of that cohort to be very different, okay? So, so the notion here, like this is just another way of understanding sort of the cohort level behavior of your application. In this case, this would be like for a, a, subscription, a subscription business. 
you can do this for anything, you know, retention, you can do it for cumulative revenue like this. Um, I recommend you do this once you start getting, once you start getting customers. Cool. Uh, here's another concept that we used. Um, the concept of um, L28. So, th so if you have, so remember we were looking at like MAU before, right? Um, if you're in a situation where you're like trying to gather users and you have them in MAU and you're like, oh, I got like you know, 5 million MAU today. Um, so how do you get a sense of who's the power user and who's not the power user, right? Um, it's actually not entirely obvious, right? If, you, if everybody was paying you money, you could identify the whale, right? The whale is the guy who spent the most money with you. Like if you had a game and you were like collecting all this money, you'd say, oh, those five guys there, they spent a lot of money, way more than everybody else. But if you're in a position where you're collecting eyeballs, that doesn't quite work the same way, right? But in some sense, what users are actually contributing to you is their daily active usage, right? So you can take a whole MAU and you can say, well, if a user came back 28 days that, that, that month, you know, they're like 28 times more of a whale than somebody who just came once that month, right? Um, so at Facebook, we call this L28, which is the active number of days, the number of days active in the last 28. So it's roughly their contribution to DAU, to daily active users. Right? You have all these MAU, but, most of, but a lot of them don't necessarily contribute to DAU because they're not there most of the time. But some of them contribute a lot of DAU because they keep coming back. Okay? This is very typical of a distribution. You'll be in a situation where L28, most of your users probably don't come back much, but some of them do. And these guys here, that's basically, you know, these are the guys for whom the service works. This is like, this is product market fit. You achieved product market fit with those guys. You know, even though you may have whatever, one million users, you've really achieved product market fit with one tenth of them, which is not bad, right? What this helps you do is this also helps you identify like what the deltas are, right? So whatever it is that's different between these guys and those guys, that's something you can study. You can go dig into it, figure out what makes them different, right? How do we get users to be more like th this and less like that? Um, I've seen this for a lot of companies. It's interesting, at Facebook, this is like very dramatic. There's a whole bunch up over here uh, and, and, and it's more balanced, but for the vast majority of companies, this is not the case. Even like, even if it's a company that has a very large MAU, it's very hard. You, just because you have a large MAU does not mean that you have a lot of users out here who are like deeply engaged in the product, right? Questions on that? No questions from this crowd. Oh, yeah. What do I mean by that? So uh, if you have like a feature you're introducing, you do the same graph for that specific feature? That's right. Yeah, so I mean like, so for instance, at something like Facebook where we have so many features glommed on together, every single feature can be analyzed like this, right? So, so we would do something like say, um, just photo sharing, right? Your, even though you might be on Facebook every day, you maybe only upload a photo once a month, twice a month. So like from the point of view of your photos engagement, you may not be actually that deeply engaged because you're not doing much uploading. So you can use this type of analysis to understand your attachment to that feature and how deeply, you know, how deeply engaged you are in that feature. And you can once again create cohorts, like the first time you uploaded a photo and did that trigger a whole bunch of photo uploading. Does that make sense? Yeah, and can you do the same thing um, for the next graph? So uh, yeah. you can tell like uh, right. these guys use it 28 times a month or whatever. That's right, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's one of these things where it applies to all the subcomponents of, of your product also, right? For you guys, it's like the, the thing you're gonna want most is just growth, top line growth. So yeah. most likely you'll just wanna know overall, right? But you're absolutely right, once you hit scale, like, and you have people working on <laughs> this aspect of your product, that one aspect on its own should be able to stand up on its own, right? It should, it should show strength in all of these metrics, right? It should, show, it should show growth that's low churn, it should show you know, good cohort behavior, good lifetime sort of behavior. And it should show, you know, good deep engagement for a meaningful chunk of the users who use it. Right? That's how you know it's really creating value. If it's just kind of something that, you know, floats in and floats out, it's not super valuable, right? People aren't using it. Yeah. 